Glenda, in a vision, Jesus showed you the five most powerful words in heaven. And I want to hear about that. But before we get to that, you have an amazing godly heritage that includes a name that many people are familiar with, which is Maria Woodworth Etter. She was your great, great aunt. Now, Maria was kind of unlikely or seemed unlikely to be used in great ways by God. She, she got saved when she was 13, but she married the wrong man. Five out of their six kids died young from childhood diseases. He was unfaithful. She had to divorce him. Then here she is, this divorced woman, uh, and, and we're talking about in the late 1800s. What did God accomplish through Maria? Oh, great things. Uh, many uh, people were saved. Uh, back then, they didn't have microphones. And when she would speak, they would, her voice would carry to the next town and people would be getting on their knees in their home, repenting. Her voice went out everywhere and uh, God used her greatly in healings and miracles, creative miracles was her number one thing that brought many uh, to the Lord. And also she was the one that imparted to Smith Wigglesworth so he could go back home into uh, England and he started doing miracles after he came to America and had her do an impartation. Well, wow. uh, just so many amazing things and uh, including she got to the point where she had an 8,000 seat tent yes. that she would travel around with and hold meetings. She was also one of the founders of the Assemblies of God denomination. Yes. So, Glenda, for you, you had this godly heritage. You got saved uh, young at six years old. But as you grew up, you, you got a little bit older, and then God gave you a warning dream. Yes. What was that about? He warned me that there was this man that was going to come into my life, and God didn't want him uh, to be in my life. He was going to lead my heart away from Jesus. And it came to pass when he came, I ended up marrying him. And uh, biggest mistake of my life, hmm. always listen when God warns. <laughs> So he ended up leaving you and the two children that you yes. had together. Uh, you met Jimmy Jackson, uh, married him, and he had epilepsy, but not necessarily big problems with it. But after you all got married, he began to have these grandma seizures. What happened to Jimmy? He had uh, one night, he had 27 grandma seizures and lost his mind and they had him in the hospital, and they had him tied down. They couldn't keep clothes on him. They had him tied to the bed, and they told me if he, they were afraid of him, and they said I would have to come bathe him and feed him. So uh, it was hard. We didn't have a car. We didn't have much of anything, and uh, uh, the Lord told me because uh, I went home and I cried out to the Jesus because to back up, the doctors said, we, they brought in papers and they said, we want you to commit him to an uh, institution. They didn't think he was ever going to get better. Right. Back in his right mind. Right. They wanted him committed. And they said, you're young enough and with your kids, you go on with your life and leave him, get a divorce, and because uh, he's going to be a vegetable all of his life. Well, Glenda, why didn't you get a pastor or somebody to come pray for him? I went through the yellow pages because mm. my dad was no longer, he was in heaven with the Lord. And I said, oh, if my dad was here, he would know how to help him. So I got the yellow pages and I looked for every uh, Pentecostal church that believed in this kind of uh, uh, 
spirits right. at uh, help with him. And uh, of course, none of them wanted anything to do with it. Mm. But you know what? I didn't get mad at any of them because if they could have, I wouldn't have the faith I got today mm. because of it. So I sought the Bible. I had all I had on the coffee table was my family Bible. And so I began to cry out and Jesus appeared to me. And he told me, took me to the book of Mark with the man that had the son, remember the epileptic son? Mm. And the uh, disciples didn't know what to do. And so uh, Jesus said, this kind cometh not but by fasting and prayer. So he said, I want you to go check him out of the hospital, bring him home. I rededicated my life to God. And he said, I want you to fast three days and three nights. And so I went to check him out. And uh, well, now, Glenda, again, the doctors were really pressuring you. Yes. Because they're like, here, sign this. You need to have him committed. Right. And so after Glenda prayed and fasted, she came back to the hospital and said to the doctors, all right, I'll have him committed. You wonder what happens next? Come right back in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Bob Duvall here with Glenda Jackson. And right before we went to the break, we found out, now Glenda, the doctors were pressuring you. You need to have him committed. Sign this thing. You went home, you prayed, you came back to the hospital and said to the doctors, okay, I'll have him committed. What did you mean by that? Yes, I uh, went back and I told the doctor, I'm going to commit him. And he, he handed me the pen. He said, now uh, you've come to your senses. Hmm. And I said, no, I found a new physician and he makes house calls. Hmm. And he looked at me and he said, who is this doctor? And I said, Dr. Jesus Christ. And oh, he was mad. Oh. And he said, I'm going to take this uh, authority away from you and I'm going to get legal authority over him and uh, I'm, we're going to commit him. And I said, go right ahead because the same doctor is also my attorney. Hmm. And when I said that, he started cursing at me and he threw the papers at me and he said, get out of here. And he said, you're, when you take him home, he's going to kill you and your children. Hmm. And uh, I would not let that get in my spirit. Hmm. And so I took him home and uh, they wouldn't, didn't even want to help me put him in the car. And uh, of course, I didn't have any car, but uh, God told me the next morning, I'm sending a, a person to your house to take you to the hospital. And it came to pass. And I brought him home. And uh, on the third day, the third, he got worse when I came home. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, seizures did. And so fear tried to come on me. So on the third night, I told God, I've went as far as I can go. And all at once, an angel appeared to me, the biggest angel I've ever seen in my life, with a golden belt around him. And he said, I've come and to tell you from the Lord, you've been given the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ. And he handed me a flaming sword and uh, he said, go touch him with this and speak in the name of Jesus and those spirits will leave him. And I did that and seven, seven came out and they named themselves as they came out. And he set up and he was in his right mind mm. and he was hungry. It seems like people uh, that come out of death are what they're all of a sudden hungry. Mm. So we fed him and uh, he said, uh, I said, now you're going to clean up. I got a, a job for a place to take you. So I had uh, the person that brought us home. 
come and take me back to the hospital. And I took him in to that doctor. And I said, doctor, this is a testimony of what my doctor, the great physician, Jesus Christ, did look at him. Well, how did they react? Did they say, oh, "Oh, yes, it's a miracle, I agree. No, they (laughs) didn't. They were madder. And I said, uh, he's in his right mind. And uh, those words that you said to me will never happen. And you know, he never had to take any medicine from that day before, never had another seizure, and just lived for the Lord uh, the rest of his life till Jesus took him home. Now, at that point, you really began to get into ministry. Yes. So what did you do for like the next 30 years or so? I worked, uh, the Lord sent me to uh, the Indian reservations. The door opened, so I went and I began to minister on reservations, uh, all different places, and uh, I really loved the American Natives because the American Natives goes back, and then I found out my Great, great aunt, she even worked with American natives. Mm. And so uh, our life really paralleled. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but we had stuff, uh, miracles happening continually, people being set free and just wonderful miracles mm. happening. Well, let's jump ahead just a little bit where Jimmy uh, ended up going home to heaven and you got a devastating diagnosis, Glenda. Yes, I did. You were told you had liver cancer. What else did they say to you? They told me I only had two months to live Hmm. because they said I had hepatitis C, which if it's not caught, goes into cirrhosis of the liver, which brings cancer of the liver. Hmm. And your liver is totally destroyed. So they told me, uh, you're not going to live you're gonna have to make arrangements. And so I was sitting there in my uh, ICU and uh, all at once I looked up and around the whole top of the wall, I seen a cloud and faces were looking down at me smiling. And then Jesus appeared and I said, oh, you've come to take me home. And I was so excited. He said, no, I've come to give you your assignment. And he told me that an angel was going to visit and that I had a lot of work to do. And I didn't understand, how could I work? And he didn't say anything about healing me. And he told me, you're gonna be checking out, you're gonna go live with your daughter for a while. And it happened and I went, uh, and I have the before and after when I did get my healing. So when I went home, the angel did come and he talked to me all night teaching me on prophecy and my assignment, and that I was gonna go all over the world, different ministries, and I said, how can this be? Because I don't know anybody. You've been been ministering on these reservations for 30 years, and yeah. And I said, I don't know anyone. He said, that's what Mary said. Hmm. Because I said, I don't know any men, you know. And so, uh, he, uh, he said, and I, I'm going to go ahead of you, and I'm going to open the doors, and three things are going to happen that you're going to do as you're sent out. And you're going to know I went ahead of you. And he said, and you better be there. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he said, first of all, you're going to have divine appointments. Number two, divine releases. And number three, divine explosions. Glenda, we have to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to find out about those five most powerful words in heaven. Come back in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. Bob Duvall here with Glenda Jackson. Now, Glenda, in a vision, you were taken to the throne room of heaven and Jesus told you the five most powerful, the five most important words in heaven. What are those words? And it came to pass. And it came to pass. 
What, what does that mean? Uh, well, angels, I saw angels reporting uh, to the throne room, to the Father. I knew the Father was there, but I didn't look at him. I was on my knees in front of Jesus. And they report every time something on earth comes to pass and heaven shouts because it gives testimony to Jesus. And uh, he told me the five most powerful words is, and it came to pass. And everywhere you read about Jesus, there's always a, and it came to pass. It's something that God said, <laughs> and then it came to pass. Right. So how do we get that to come to pass in our lives? We got to have the now faith. Mm. Mm. And the Lord showed me when you read uh, now faith is the Holy Spirit takes that word now, turns it around and it spells W-O-N. Mm. It already victory was given by Jesus on the cross. Amen. Now, Glenda, there was something else that Jesus said to you. I think it was a pretty amazing where he said, because we know he's in heaven making intercession for us. But he told you, I'm not praying for salvation. I'm not praying for anybody to get saved or anybody to get healed. What is he praying for? He said, I already uh, uh, did the work for that to happen. And I said, well, what are you praying for? And he said, have you never read about Simon, what I told him? He said, uh, Simon, Simon, Satan has desire to sift thee as wheat, but I have prayed that your faith fell not. And he told me, I want you to go back and tell my people and uh, uh, the uh, remnant, the church, I am praying that their faith fail not. That's what I'm doing here. And so tell them they have prayed over faith, encouraged faith, and anointed faith. And they need to use it and not let it die because the enemy is trying to destroy their faith. That's all he's after is their faith. And if he gets it, then he's got everything else that they have. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about destroying faith and hope and so on. It's so many uh, believers and, and, and everyone around the world, they look at the news, they look at the economy, they look at what's going on in society around them, and it, Glenn, it's discouraging. It's disheartening. It's, it's, it's a fearful time in many ways. Um, but you say, in spite of all that, this is the greatest time of all. Yes. Why do you say that? Because we are living in the greatest time that all fulfillment of God's word is going to come to pass. But the main thing is his glory is going to be poured out. And uh, the glory of God, we're living in a time chosen just for this. And uh, the greatest miracle, everything, the, remember the glory is going to be greater in the latter house than the former. And it's going to, he showed me the world is going to get darker. It's going to get black like. But he told me, he said, be encouraged because the church is my jewels, my diamonds shining, and they always shine better on black velvet. Hmm. And he said the church is going to be at its shining be best and glorifying in the time of greatest revival the world's ever seen is about, ooh la la basi, is about to happen. And everything he showed me at one time coming, and this is hard for people to believe, but I believe it. Uh, at one time, just think, in the entire world, one million people are going to be raised from the dead mm -hmm. at, at one time. Well, well, Glenda, take just a couple moments right now and pray for that viewer that's watching us. Okay. Right now, I lift up uh, 
the people out there, Lord. I bring them before you, and you said you were giving me uh, to release uh, divine favor over, Lord, their divine appointment. I am asking you, and the Lord says to say unto you, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and I am the author and finisher of your faith. And I say unto you, seek my face. Did not I say, if you sought me with all your heart, you would find me. And I am the encourager of your spirit, of your heart, of everything. Look unto me, because I have much to give you. My answers are greater than your prayers, saith the Lord. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Put your trust in me. Don't look to the world. Look to my word and look up for your help cometh from above, not from the earth, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glenda, real quickly, why don't we see more miracles? Because churches. the devil wants you to see all the bad stuff coming in and he gets our attention on the news. And uh, what, uh, number six is not man's number, it's Satan's influence on man. Why do you think they have news, the six o'clock news, mm. for Satan's attention for us? But you know what? The Bible is better than the news. That's right. Be careful what you hear in Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, be careful what you hear. It'll be added to you. That's so right. all the devil has is we get witnessed every day of what he's doing. Hmm. But we need to seek God and have testimony of, and it come to pass. And God showed me faith means forsaking all I take him. Forsaking all, I take him. That's a word for you. And you have Jesus in heaven making intercession for you that your faith will not fail. And if you don't know him, that's step one. Turn your life over to Jesus, to Yeshua today, and live for him. This is the greatest time ever. Amen.